Sri Lanka is not only famous for being home of one of the most delicious teas, but it turns out it is home to 350,000 garment workers. And the country is an attractive hub for the world's most famous garment brands. Although we do not hear much about the ready-made garment industry of Sri Lanka as much as we hear about the ready-made garment industry of Bangladesh, for example, it turns out that Sri Lanka's garment industry exports more than 60% of exports of the country taken as a whole. Hello everyone, this is Asil Sorbekava, your guide to understanding matters of fast fashion and sustainable development the legal way. Before we talk about some of the most obvious issues in the ready-made garment industry of Sri Lanka, let me provide you with some brief information as to how it turned out that um, Sri Lanka became an attractive country to uh, Western cloth brands. For the past 40 years, since Sri Lanka has established uh, a special economic zone to attract foreign direct investment in the place called Katunayake, it's a, um, a place next to its um, capital, Colombo. Uh, the place uh, has been a hub for the ready-made garment industry, export production, and with it, it became a migration point for young, unexperienced um, um, workers, um, mostly female, uh, that came to join forces, that came to work uh, in the place uh, from rural uh, places of Sri Lanka. So it turns out that this place called Katunayake is home to more than 80 factories, 80 garment factories in which predominantly uh, women uh, work, these unexperienced high school educated women, uh, or that they are employed in, in the subcontracting, subcontractor garment factories of uh, the main ones, the ones that are like, um, let's say more, uh, so more or less have an official status. They have uh, official contracts with the uh, garment uh, industries. Uh, garment um, brands. So what are the brands that produce in Sri Lanka? Among them we can name for example uh, Nike, Tommy Hilfiger, Pink, Triumph, H&M, and Taylor, uh, Intimissimi, Intimissimi, excuse me, um, Mark and Spencer, uh, Gap, uh, Next, uh, Victoria's Secret, and others. Now let's address some of the most obvious issues that garment workers in uh, Sri Lanka experience. The first issue to me is the question of salary. In Sri Lanka, for instance, the basic pay averages are around 180 to 197 US dollars per month. Yet the workers would require around 481, let's say 500 US dollars per month to support their families. The second issue to me is about overtime salary, overtime work. Uh, it turns out that um, even if they do overtime, garment workers in Sri Lanka can only earn uh, 280 US dollars, whereas we said that in order to you know, support one's family, one would need around 481, 500 US dollars per month. So that actually means, that actually says that even by working, um, you know, making overtime and uh, filling in uh, extensive hours uh, of work, one would never able to be able to, um, you know, support one's family, even with an overtime. As a proof, for example, let me read an excerpt from an article of the website called apparelresources.com, which writes that the apparel workers in Sri Lanka recently staged a protest against fast fashion giant H&M, demanding for better working conditions and living wages. The workers were protesting against the Hidaramani factory in Sri Lanka for failing to provide living wages to its workers. The factory produces for H&M. The protest was peaceful, however, Dabindu Collective reportedly said that the protesting workers were threatened by the factory management. And of course, there are other examples of protest and discontent, um, the situations where 
garment workers in Sri Lanka uh, are not happy about their salary payments and salary rates in general, uh, regardless of, um, you know, um, a specific brand. Uh, certainly there are other examples, but let's not get into that. The point to understand here is that the issue, well, number one uh, issue is uh, the lowest salaries. Issue number three, discrimination of women. There are 350,000 garment workers in Sri Lanka and 82% out of this number are women. Women face gender-based abuses, assault and difficulties and are vulnerable both in garment factories and uh, off their working time, um, for example, in rented uh, homes where they live. Issue number four for me uh, seems to be occupational safety and health and poor working conditions. Sri Lankan garment workers miss their coffee breaks and don't even drink water in order to not waste time going to the restroom because um, they are under pressure to, to finish the workload, to finish the number of pieces they are required to um, submit to give uh, uh, to return uh, at the end of their workload. This reminded me of a scene in the movie The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith in which um, uh, he was uh, working when he was working at the um, office um, uh, by making calls to clients and stuff and when he avoided specifically and on purpose to drink water because this would save him um, time in order to make uh, as many calls as he could required for from him and uh, to finish his uh, shift by if i'm not mistaken by 3 a.m or something so uh, clearly uh the man was under pressure so you know uh, i'm giving you the, the this example from this movie in order to uh, for you to visualize what it means to not drink water uh, while you're working uh, up to 10, uh, 12, 14 hours a day and uh, in order to maximize your, um, you know, working capacity in order to be able to finish the workload that was required from you, which is, um, you know, clearly um, unrealistic. But, uh, you know, these workers, they, um, you know, sacrifice their health um, in order to, uh, you know, be able to earn the money to, to be able to survive. And you can add to that uh, situations of um, um, assaults and threats and um, just um, very uh, stressful atmosphere from uh, the uh, management in order uh, to, you know, uh, influence the workers to uh, finish the workload um, because you know they have received uh, orders from garment um, brands, uh, fast fashion brands, and this actually clearly impacts the, the state of well being of the workers. When I was a child, I used to see TV commercials on Sri Lankan teas on which happy and content. And these beautiful women in saris would be picking teas on uh, tea plantations. Ceylon tea was a thing back then and it still is, isn't it? Ceylon is the name of the country Sri Lanka, if you're not aware of it. Um, so, I mean, advertisements always give uh, this joyous impression, right? And what I'm encountering these days in... Um, with various websites and, uh, you know, on YouTube even. Um, and this is uh, actually in part because of the cookies and just if once you open a website, then the next time you know these cookies will follow you and you will see an ad of an um, apparel brand. So um, just to say that currently, um, you know, these brands are making advertisements about as to how their clothes have been made uh, from recycled materials and how they are very conscious and how these clothes, um, you know, take into consideration the environment. In French, they call it eco-responsable, uh, ecologically responsible, if that would be a right translation. So uh, this is right now what is going on. Uh, a uh, advertisement washing, greenwashing, um, however you want to name it. 
So back to the uh, ads uh, of my childhood, or commercials of my childhood, when I used to see the Ceylon tea plantations. Uh, this is to say that I always had the Ceylon tea plantation image of happy, content women uh, picking the teas. And every time I would be thinking of Sri Lanka, I would be thinking of these um, beautiful green plantations and these beautiful people. And I thought so until now. So fast forward. When I started getting interest in the fast fashion industry from the angle of employment conditions, uh, rights of workers, human rights, the environment, I thought it would be interesting to see if the Sri Lankan ready-made garment industry is any different from the RMG industry of Bangladesh, India, or any other country. My research has shown that it is no different, that Sri Lankan workers experience the same difficulties as much as Bangladeshi ones do. And just like that, my childhood memory of happy Sri Lankan um, people, these beautiful green plantations, got shattered and has now thus been replaced with the poor employment conditions, discrimination of workers, these um, low salaries and difficulties faced in their of women and garment workers in general of Sri Lanka. That's all for today. For videos on fast fashion and matters of fast fashion and sustainable development, subscribe to my channel and join me every Sunday by 10 a.m. CT. And if you like this video, then smash the like button and don't forget to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, take care and see you next Sunday. Bye!